day beginning at Passover until 50 days later on Pentecost. It was a joyous celebration with the people bringing the first fruits of their harvest to the temple with thanksgiving to God for all he had done to them. However, with the destruction of the second temple and the expulsion of the Jewish people from their land in the year 70 AD, the celebration began to be more focused on the anniversary of the giving of the Ten Commandments to Moses at Horeb, which fell 50 days, as well fell 50 days after the first day of Passover. After leaving Egypt on the night of Passover, the Jews traveled to the Sinai Desert, and there they experienced a divine revelation as God gave the Jewish people his law, as we read in Deuteronomy chapter 4. When Moses reminded the people of that experience, he said, Concerning that day you stood before the Lord, your God, in Horeb, on the day of the assembly, when the Lord said to me, Gather the people to me and let them hear my words, so that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth, and may teach their sons. Then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire to the midst of heaven with darkness, gloom, storm, and a great voice. The Lord spoke to you from the midst of the fire. He declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to perform. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone. So the Jewish feast, my brothers and sisters, of Pentecost was both a harvest festival and a festival remembering the giving of the Ten Commandments on Mount Horeb. For Christians, the Feast of Pentecost commemorates the, Holy, the, the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles 50 days after Pascha, which is again the glorious resurrection of Christ, our Passover from death into life. The parallels between the Hebrew and Christian traditions begin to become obvious when we recall that the Passover was given as a type of the resurrection and passing through the Red Sea is understood as a type of the sacrament of baptism. At the giving of law, there was the mountain. At the descent of the Holy Spirit, there was the upper room. Then there was the fire at the top of the mountain. Here are the tongues of flame. Then there were claps of thunder and darkness. Here there is the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Then the Ten Commandments, or then the commandments of law were written on tablets of stone by God's finger. Here, the law of God is written on our stony, stony, sinful hearts by the Holy Spirit. The descent of the Holy Spirit fulfills the Jewish Passover, or the Jewish Pentecost, sorry, in numbers of ways. First, the reaping of the first fruits of the grain harvest is fulfilled by the first harvest on the day of Pentecost which consisted of the Jews who believed and were baptized. In John 12, 24, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. The seed here, brothers and sisters, is Christ, the first fruit, and the grain is the church, harvested by the Holy Spirit, of whom St. John Chrysostom said, uh, uh, says, came down as the keen edge sickle on the day of Pentecost. The offering of the two loaves of le unleavened bread during Pentecost of old is prophet prophetic of the ingatherings of both Jews and Gentiles. According to Father Stephen de Young, Pentecost is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Hosea after Yahweh had declared Israel to be not my people that Israel would be restored when a people that did not yet exist, that is the Gentiles, would be called his people. While at the same time, those who had been rejected, the Jews, would be declared to be his people once again. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, Pentecost is the reversal of the Tower of Babylon. Recall that the nations attempted by their own effort for their own glory to build a tower to reach God in order to control them. God saw the danger of this and confused their languages, quote, so they wouldn't be able to understand each other and scattered them across the face of the entire earth. We heard in the Kentucky hymn that Father just sang, when the high one descended, confusing the tongues, he divided the nations, referring to Babel. And when he distributed the fiery tongues, he called all to one unity referring to Pentecost, when the disciples were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, 
as the Spirit gave them utterance. And devout men from every nation under heaven were dwelling in Jerusalem at that time and heard them speaking of the mighty works of God. This, brothers and sisters, is the fulfillment of Psalm 18, where we hear this. This is amazing to me. There are no tongues, no words in which their voices are not heard. Their sound hath gone forth into all the earth, and their words unto the end of the world. The gathering of the nations began at Pentecost and continues even up to this very day as people hear the Holy Gospel and are gathered by the Holy Spirit into his church. The 50th day is a symbol of perfect perfection. Seven symbolizes perfection. Seven times seven plus one is perfectly perfect and indicates the fullness of time in a mystery like the understanding of the eighth day. The 50th day signifies the complete completion and the beginning of the end. Uh, the beginning of the end of the age and an age which we have access to right now, right here and now, because of the coming of the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, the Apostle Peter quoted the prophet Joel to explain what was taking place. He said, it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Brothers and sisters, we are living in the last days, and we have for a, at least the last 2,000 years. The gift of the Spirit for the uh, the gifts of the Spirit for the age of God's kingdom are given to the people of God while still living in this age as a foretaste of the world to come. And brothers and sisters, all of us who have been chrismated, all of us who have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, have participated in this outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. The giving of the law to Moses by the Son of God is brought to completion. It is fulfilled with the coming of the Holy Spirit of truth, fulfilled in the true sense, being filled to overflowing by the giving of the Spirit to the church. Further, the fulfilled Pentecost establishes a new covenant. As we heard during the prophecy of Ezekiel read last evening at Vespers, I will, I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And I will cleanse you and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. And uh, will I give you. And I will take away the stony heart of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Chrismation. The Holy Spirit came upon the apostles at the fulfilled Pentecost because of this cleansing. And as the fulfillment of the promise of the new covenant, we hear... From Ezekiel, I will put my spirit within you and make you walk in my commandments and be careful to obey my statutes. You will be my people and I will be your God. The covenant. Brothers and sisters, today all things have been fulfilled. The feast of nativity when God became a man is fulfilled by Pascha. When he suffered, died and was buried and rose from the dead. For us, Pascha is fulfilled by the ascension which uh, when God in human flesh sat at the right hand of God the Father. Ascension is fulfilled by the great and final feast of Pentecost, when God gave us his Holy Spirit to allow us to grow more and more into the likeness of him. How does this happen, brothers and sisters? A, we are baptized and chrismated, and then we acquire as much of the Holy Spirit as we can by the cleansing of the vessels of our hearts, making room for him to come to us and never leave us. I love sharing this, this story about Saint Seraphim of Sarah when he's attempting to explain this concept to this man, Motovilov. After much explanation, Motovilov says this, I do not understand how I can be certain that I am in the spirit of God. How can I discern for myself his true manifestation in me? And Father Seraphim replied, I have already told you your godliness, that it is very simple. And I have related to you, I have related in detail how people come to be in the Spirit of God and how we can recognize His presence in, in us. So what do you want, my son? I want to understand well, Father Milo says. Then Father Seraphim took him very firmly by the soul, shoulders and said, We are both in the Spirit of God now, my son. Why don't you look at me? And he replied, I cannot look, Father, because your eyes are flashing like lightning. Your face has become brighter than the sun, and my eyes ache with pain. 
brothers and sisters, this is Pentecost, and this is our task, to shine with the grace of God by acquiring the Holy Spirit, to shine with the same glory that Jesus showed us on Mount Tabor at the Holy Transfiguration. Some living saints have done this in, in this life. My prayer, brothers and sisters, is that we all shine with his light in the world to come. By the intercessions of the holy apostles who were filled with the Holy Spirit, O Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen.